How's it going everyone? It's Sam. The market is racing up. Bitcoin is approaching 64,000. The S&P 500 hitting new all-time highs. NASDAQ up 3% on the day. Tesla's up 7%. Risk on assets just in general are going nuts. And I just recorded a 16-minute video talking about this and the audio didn't work. So uh, I, I want to go through what is happening right now, why we're moving up, why I'm quite excited for the future, and then also the various levels of wealth within crypto. Like, how important is 0.01 Bitcoin? How important is 0.1 Bitcoin, 1 Bitcoin, 10 Bitcoin, 100, 1,000, right? And we'll be talking about those various levels. This is more of a fun video. Obviously, everyone's situation is different, right? Everyone's making different amounts of money. Everyone has different backgrounds. Everyone's at different ages. But I want to give you my overarching thoughts. Now, of course, if you want to trade crypto using leverage, there's a link to Marjex underneath the video. You can see we broke out of this pattern, retested, just like we said, maybe we'll bounce, in, in which case that'd be quite bullish for a couple different reasons. But you can see we started to bounce uh, today. Uh, the trade that we opened just a few days ago, up 136%. Not bad. Uh, I'm actually going to go on Altcoin Daily's channel. Filmed it just a few days ago. And at that point, my uh, positions were all slightly red. Now they're all pretty green. So unfortunately, that's bad timing. But as you can see, like the market is doing great today. Especially if we put in a higher high here. If we can break this $65,000 region, then we have higher lows, higher highs, a retest of this line. I'd be looking for this $69,000 mark. A lot of shorts will be liquidated. They're already getting liquidated today. It's quite bullish. And part of this is due to the Fed yesterday, right? Part of it is due to the Fed. By the way, there's that link to Marjix if you want to trade. There's also uh, extra bonus right now where you can get free caspa tokens it's a cryptocurrency that's done really well over the last year up to five thousand dollars worth just by trading i think part of the reason the market is racing up today is the urgency from the fed they started lowering rates by 50 basis points showing that they really mean business there's a chance they're going to lower by another 50 basis points at the next meeting let me check that percent likelihood right now it's in around a 39% chance of another 50 basis point hike yesterday. This was a 27% chance. So it looks like they're going to possibly lower rates pretty quickly, even in the future. This makes risk on assets more attractive. Let's take real estate, for example. You know, it's a little bit different than Bitcoin, but real estate, if you own a million dollar property, $750,000 mortgage, let's say this is like a four unit apartment building, for example. If you have a half a percent lower rate on a $750,000 loan, that means $3,750 less that you pay in interest each year. What's that money worth, right? That $3,750. Let's say it's worth, I don't know, 20X, 20X multiple. That means that that rate cut helped you increase the value of the property by $75,000. So your $1 million property now worth $1,075,000. Now, of course, some of this is priced into the market. Some people already realize this. Real estate in general is an inefficient market. But comparably, it's a better cash flowing asset, right? So it's an interesting thing when, late, when rates get lowered because other assets look a lot more attractive. One, because you can't get as much on your money in the bank. But then two, because you can actually make more money than you were making even a, you know, maybe a couple weeks ago if you buy a new property. Same thing can be said with stocks and uh, crypto as well. A lot of crypto is tied to global liquidity. So as the Fed lowers rates, as there's more stimulus, as there's more money printing, Bitcoin goes up directly with that kind of money printing and liquidity injected in the system. Similar to stocks and real estate, but it's a smaller asset. It's more volatile. It has more potential in the sense that uh, there are a lot of people that have not bought it yet that now have access to it with BlackRock and Fidelity offering ETFs. So it moves up faster than a lot of other assets. It's more volatile though too. Now, 
I want to talk about the various levels of Bitcoin wealth. And obviously, everyone's in a different situation. Like I said, not everyone has the same goals. But I've been talking with a couple really interesting people in real estate over the last couple of days. Um, one person is really successful and he's stacking like mad, right? He found out about Bitcoin uh, a few years ago. He's been in real estate for a while. Uh, like I said, very successful, but has started to stack heavily, putting a majority of what he makes into Bitcoin. And he feels like, you know, he's not stacking quick enough because it could get away from him and it's much harder to stack, obviously. If we never get back to this level, then you're buying at 100,000, 150,000. Like if you want a Bitcoin or five Bitcoin or 10 Bitcoin, right? It gets exponentially harder when we take that next log step up or when we take that next, you know, 3x up. So I get that. Obviously, people's situations are different, but people seem to like it when I talk about, you know, various stages of Bitcoin wealth. So what's it mean, right? How, how should you start out if you're someone newer, maybe in the market, or maybe you're a veteran and you've been around a couple cycles and you've been able to plow a lot of money into the market? Like, how do you stack up? There is one tool that we can use that shows you how you stack up versus other entities. You can go to the Bitcoin rich list and it shows you what we normally look at, the top 100 wallets and stuff. But it also shows you the overall wallet addresses at various levels of Bitcoin wealth. So there are 5.8 million addresses that have 0 to 0. 0.00001 Bitcoin. This is 10% of the overall wallet addresses. Together, they hold about 33 Bitcoin, so barely anything, right? They all hold a couple dollars or less of Bitcoin. Now, why why do people even have this? Well, it's probably wallets that they've moved Bitcoin away from, and then there's rounding issues or something like that, or fees change. So this is basically stuck. Right? It's not worth going and getting, you know, putting more Bitcoin in to take it out. Then there are people that have you know, the next log step up, and then the next up, and next up, and next up. The number of wallets that hold 1 to 10 Bitcoin are about 861,000. So less than a million wallets hold between 1 and 10. When you account for everyone that has 1 Bitcoin and up, the wallets that have 1 Bitcoin and up, there are a little bit over 1 million wallets that have a Bitcoin. Okay. Obviously, some of them hold 1,000 or 10,000 Bitcoin. So there are almost 20, 20 million Bitcoin right now. And uh, the majority of the supply is held by the largest wallets. You can see the percent of Bitcoin total. 10% of it is owned by wallets between 1 and 10 Bitcoin. 22 is owned by 10 to 100 Bitcoin. The largest group of holders, 1,000 to 10,000 Bitcoin. Keep in mind, there are not 1 million people that hold 1 Bitcoin or more. A lot of people have multiple wallets. A lot of people might have, you know, if they have 100 Bitcoin, maybe they have 10 different wallets. So my estimate, probably more like 300,000 maybe, maybe even less. 300,000 people that hold one Bitcoin or more. And of course, there are proxies, right? You could buy a Bitcoin miner or microstrategy and then you own the company that then owns the Bitcoin. But this is still an asset that not many people have right now. Let's say there are 300,000 people that own one Bitcoin. There are 50, 60 million millionaires in the world. It means less than 1% of all millionaires own a Bitcoin. Chances are not every millionaire is ever going to be able to buy a Bitcoin. Right? Well, not even chances are. They can't. <laughs> we have uh, 50 million millionaires unless you know, half of them go bankrupt and <laughs> lose their money uh, or two-thirds of them. There are only 21 million Bitcoin. If everyone tries to buy, if millionaires try to buy Bitcoin, maybe they all try to buy a quarter of a Bitcoin, right? 60 million mil millionaires try to buy a quarter, that's 15 million Bitcoin. The fact is there is a lot of Bitcoin that's lost. You send it to the wrong wallet address and lose it, or you lose the keys to it, so you can't access that Bitcoin anymore. There's a lot of Bitcoin that's lost, probably, I'd say, well over a couple million Bitcoin. There are also people that will never sell. So there are only about 2 million Bitcoin on exchanges. Of course, if the price goes up, there will be more people that are willing to sell that don't have it on an exchange now, but they move it to an exchange to sell it. So maybe there's 5, 10 million Bitcoin that's being willing to sell. 
The fact is that those millionaires would bid up the price so quickly that they couldn't afford it anymore. Not necessarily because Bitcoin's going to go well over a million dollars, but let's say it goes to $200,000 or $500,000, right? Let's make the math easy. Call it $400,000. Okay, a millionaire wants to buy a quarter of a Bitcoin. That's $100,000 that they have to put into this asset. A lot of millionaires aren't that liquid, right? To go put in six figures into a riskier asset that they're just starting to buy. Like for me, I bought a lot of Bitcoin over the last few years, but it takes years, right? I did not have my full allocation to Bitcoin three, four years ago when I started buying. It took a bear market and I kept on buying. Uh, when it went down, I kept on buying when it started to move up during the bear market, right? I bought to about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. That first pump, I stopped when we hit the uh, Bitcoin halving. I, I had set this plan that I was gonna buy up to the Bitcoin halving and I'm going to hold and I'm going to sell some of my Bitcoin during the bull market. So it takes a while. A lot of people would not be able to allocate quickly enough. The fact is most millionaires won't be able to ever buy full Bitcoin. But some people want to know, okay, well, if I if most millionaires can't buy a full Bitcoin, if I'm never going to be able to buy a full Bitcoin, you know, is what I have significant? And of course, everyone's situation is different. Right? If you're worth $10 million and you have point one Bitcoin, it's not significant to you, right? It, it's just not. $6,000 in a $10 million net worth, it doesn't move the needle at all, even if Bitcoin are, is going to go to, I don't know, a uh, million dollars. That's not going to change your net worth much at all. But let's look at the various levels. If you're someone with $10,000, if you're a buddy of mine, right, and your net worth is $10,000, maybe you make a couple hundred dollars a month that you can uh, put towards investments after like 401k and paying off debt and all that kind of stuff. Make a couple hundred dollars each month that you can put towards uh, something else. I would not say to put all your net worth in Bitcoin, even though I think it's going to go up because we can't really handle that at first. Like as people, we, we have a hard time handling volatility, even if mentally we know it's the best place to be. So I'd say with someone worth that much, maybe start with two or three percent. Is that going to move the needle $200, $300 in Bitcoin like in your long-term retirement journey? No, probably not. But it gives you an idea for how you react to volatility. Can you deal with an asset? Even if it's just $300, can you deal with an asset that goes up and down 10% a day, 20% a day? Can you feel okay like not working for a day, right? Maybe it's your day off and Bitcoin goes down 20% and you know that you lost $60. Can you deal with that? Then as time goes on, you'll probably accumulate more as you can get more and more income, which is probably the most important thing on a wealth journey is getting more income, stable income that you can grow over time, getting six figures of income and more. Then you can plow a lot more into assets over time. So Bitcoin obviously is going to move up with liquidity. Other assets are going to move up too. Obviously, if you can get your hands on Bitcoin sooner rather than later, that's going to be a good thing for you. Like if you just think this year versus 10 years from now versus 20, 30 years. Um, sorry too, if this is a bit laggy, but 0.01 Bitcoin maybe is the first fundamental goal to hit. Right? After you get, maybe if you're worth more, maybe you put 1% of your portfolio. If you're worth $10 million, maybe you put in, you know, you buy one and a half Bitcoin or something. You buy a hundred grand worth. Um, just something that you can feel that same volatility, but you start slower, right? You're probably tied up uh, in more assets, but start there. Uh, arbitrary numbers, 0.01 Bitcoin, good place to start, 600 bucks. Now, is that going to help you retire? Yes, it's going to help you retire. Is it going to make you retire? No. Even if Bitcoin gets to Michael Saylor's goals of $10 million, $13 million, $50 million, right? In a world where Bitcoin hits $10 million, there's probably severe... Uh, inflation, right? Let's say debasement of the currency of 7%, which I don't think is crazy right now, 7% a year for 20 years, that would turn $400,000 into $100,000 of purchasing power. So a $13 million Bitcoin is really maybe more like $3 million Bitcoin in today's dollars. So great return, but is 0.01 Bitcoin gonna help you retire? No, it might be helping you buy a car, 
but we're also talking 20 years in the future. But it's a good place to start because it allows you to get all your processes in place. Buying Bitcoin, what does that mean? Can I handle the volatility? What will it take to get to 0.1 Bitcoin? And et cetera, et cetera. All right, so a great place to start. Then the next goal, obviously, 0.1 Bitcoin. It's awesome. It's a tenth of the way to a full Bitcoin. Again, not going to make you retire, even if Bitcoin hits you know, uh, inflation adjusted $3 million today or in 20 years, I mean, but $3 million worth of today's dollars, that's 300,000. Uh, again, maybe you can buy a house in cash. Maybe, maybe you can, uh, put down some down payments on some duplexes or quad, uh, quad plexes, four plexes. Great. It's a awesome place. You're probably ahead of your peers, but again, that's assuming it appreciates that much. Right now, it's about $6,000. $6,000 in an asset that's appreciating like this, it's awesome. It's a really important milestone. I think it's a good place to start. Then you try to go to a quarter Bitcoin, half Bitcoin, then a full Bitcoin. Full Bitcoin is interesting because of the whole coiner status. Now, this is also an important level too, because let's say you think Michael Saylor's right and Bitcoin's going to do $13 million. Maybe it's 10, 20 years from now, right? 20 years, let's say. Again, maybe it's $3 million in today's value. That's probably enough to retire for a lot of people. Now, are you going to have a second home? Are you going to be living on the water? Are you going to be able to drive, uh, I don't know, uh, new Mercedes Benz each year? No, probably not, right? Right. $120,000 doesn't stretch quite as much as some people think. And I say 120 because let's say if inflation adjusted, it's 3 million. Maybe you live off the 4% rule. Let's say you could sell all your Bitcoin at that point and invest in other uh, ways. Maybe the S&P 500 or real estate or something. You get 4% return wherever uh, you invest in. That's $120,000. Okay, awesome. You have $120,000 a year to spend again once you pay for medical expenses because in this scenario maybe you're not working you pay for insurance taxes property taxes your kids all that kind of stuff you're probably not balling out you're probably not paying for their college each year on that but let's say you have a couple bitcoin well then you're you know you're in that six million dollar range you can probably do that kind of stuff you can have a bigger house maybe it's a million 1.5 million dollar house right Again, that's assuming we get to an awesome place in Bitcoin's price. But then you start getting into 10 Bitcoin, okay? Then you, even if we're not quite as bullish, even if Bitcoin goes to half a million dollars, you probably have enough to retire on, right? That'd be $5 million worth of Bitcoin. Then, you know, if we get into the bullish scenarios, you're going to be really well set. Let's say Bitcoin hits a million dollars. You have $10 million. Yeah, hit $13 million. Okay. You're looking at, you know, you're looking at a hundred plus million dollars. Maybe today it's worth, or in inflation adjusted dollars, maybe it's closer to worth 30 million. But at that point, you could, like, let's say, again, you sell in a tax uh, tax efficient way. You want to take profits. You put into real estate, you could buy a ton of cash flow from that. Let's say you get 5% cash on cash return. You could make 1.5 million a year just from cash flow, and then you have appreciation, uh, all that kind of stuff. That's assuming you want to divest or you want to invest in something else. But again, that just shows you like how much is that actually worth. Then you get into the people that have 100 Bitcoin and 1,000 Bitcoin, and they'll have the kind of money where they can you know donate to their kids' schools and build new wings or build auditoriums and that kind of stuff, like generational money. But this is assuming you can make it through, just like. With real estate, you have to be able to make it through tough times. You have to be able to deal with tenants leaving, expenses that you're not ready for. You have to have cash on the sidelines. You have to make sure everything's set up legally. I would say that's similar to maybe how you store your crypto, like making sure your LLC is set up for a real estate transaction is similar to making sure that your keys are safe, something like that. So you know, if someone else screws up or wants to screw you, you don't get screwed. So the key is time in the market. Make sure you can last long enough and then you'll be set, assuming we get to where we think we're going to go. So I think we're in a good place. I'm really excited. I think with inflation coming down so significantly with us going to a time of higher liquidity and just generally more money printing, it's going to be great for hard assets. Let me know your thoughts though underneath the video. If you want to leverage up, if you want to take a portion of your portfolio and try to get a better return, you can use the link underneath the video to Marjex. Again, there's that big Caspa airdrop. And 
If you buy at opportune times, you can get really good returns. Of course, make sure you know what you're doing. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let me know if you've been accumulating and if you're going to be a long-term holder. All right, are you looking to take profits this bull run? Let me know down below in the comments section. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.